I thought yeah. it was great. It was great. <laughs> yeah, right? It was great. It was like the perfect, see, I don't even want to call it a film. I don't want to say it's like it was a perfect fun movie. to sure. sit down and watch you know it was yeah. light it wasn't too um overly in your face it was what you thought it would be oh for sure yeah i mean a little bit of a twist on the whole uh, we always reference it now as like groundhog day right yes of course um, but a twist on that you know in a, in a different way and there's been a couple of them more recently that have been doing this yeah new tape on that theme the whole time loop theory yeah yeah definitely I'm going to hit you with the uh, with the log line here for boss level, the Hulu original. A retired special forces officer is trapped in a never ending time loop on the day of his death. So yeah. pretty on the nose. Uh, Frank Grillo stars in it and produces. And uh -huh. I, got, I got a fun fact for you. The boy, Joey, that's uh -huh. his real that's his real son. Oh, huh, interesting. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of neat. But oh, that's cool. Yeah, I. I liked how they really sell you his character as an everyday kind of guy who's stuck in a rut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that when we, when we're introed and we hear his inner dialogue, his inner monologue, which is yeah. one of the most, I don't usually like it in everything, but in a film like this, it's perfect. And it, it works. Helps. And it helps. I love, I love it. And it just, it gives that insight. Cause at first you probably just see him as some guy who's a badass action star. Right. But when we're hearing the inner dialogue, we realize, uh, you know, like he's just going through the motions. He, he's going things. through the motions. He's stuck in a rut. I think, you know, VO can be really cheesy and it can go wrong easily. Yes. Like Groundhog's Day, it didn't have VO. So we learned everything through character. So can you do it? Absolutely. So to use VO is, it's risky, but it works because it makes him endearing because since it is an action movie, we don't have a whole lot of time of watching him kind of right. grow and struggle. Um, so just seeing him go through the motions of trying to defend himself from assassins for like the first eight minutes of the movie, you yes, need that totally. VO. And so it really works because the way he's discussing it is, you know, he's just like, and block this and slap him in the face and oh well it's you know, oh, did i hit the bus yet yeah, like yeah yeah exactly yeah he sounds like a guy he sounds like a guy who's like working in a cubicle and hates his and Just, hates his day job right yeah yeah rinse so, repeat rinse repeat yeah no, absolutely perfect i love it um and to structure a film like this is incredibly difficult because yes. you have to yeah. keep going back and going back and hitting those key points to show linearly where the story is at. Absolutely. Um, but it hit all the beats. Yeah, it did. It did. Um, I, we likened it to um, one of my, my guys all time favorite films, which is crank. Yeah. He loves that movie. And it felt, it had that same, you know, just fast ready pace. feel, fast yeah. pace. You're, you wake up and you're immediately with that character. And now you're going on this journey with that character. And you're with him the whole time. You're trying to figure it out as he tries to figure it yeah. out. Yeah. No, I absolutely love it. I, I really liked, uh, I mean, I like the inciting incident where he sees his kid. Um, I like that. Uh, I, I like the midpoint where, he, you know, he thinks he is winning the day. Like, you think, you're looking at this film, it's halfway through, and he gets the bad guy. And you're going, okay. Yeah, Where is no. this going? And then he goes, right. who's protecting your son? And then it's like his whole world is blown apart, right? That's a great midpoint because he literally goes through a death and then yes. he's rebirthed uh, and goes, you know, tries to protect his kid, gets no kid, but goes through a depression mm -hmm. where he wakes up every day and he's being assassinated. And instead he can't get out of bed. Yeah. Can't yeah. At that bed. point, yeah, yeah, when he sees his kid die, it's like, why yeah. even bother? I yeah. Mean, there's so he's no just getting... Yeah, What's that motivation? Killed. Oh right? man, it's mm -hmm. just uh, yeah, it's really good watching his character grow. And there was a moment where where Mel Gibson's um, antagonist, who we can be honest, not really developed character, but it's Mel yeah. Gibson, so he's 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 you know he's knocking it out of the park. Um, but where where Mel Gibson character describes him as a guy who who's 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 um, hustle and um, 
determination makes up for his lack of talent. Yes, exactly. That, like, that was a great line. Yeah. Yeah. If that yeah. doesn't make make a character endearing and make you want to get behind a little guy or underdog like that, I'm t- yeah. Even though he's like, you know, this killing machine. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. What a great way to sell a character. Oh, for sure. I mean, and you know, it, I like that that midpoint happens. You're absolutely right. But then it also, it's interesting because there's this interesting. I hate to say it, but kind of like third act shift as well. Yeah. And it's, and it works and it's great. It's when he realizes, wait a minute, I can still save my wife, right. my ex-wife. And so then now we're, he's got a motivation again to keep going into that. Week. Yeah. And that yeah. is, that's birthed from the fact that, so when we're writing our screenplays, as you know, we're always, we right. always want to up the stakes, right? Yes. And yeah. it's hard to keep upping the stakes without it getting super ridiculous, especially in this film where like the fate of the world we already know is in the balance. Like, how are you going to up the stakes more? Right. So they up the stakes intelligently by making it more personal which is brilliant so yeah. once he gets the bad guy the first time they up the stakes by well what about his kid right yes. so we up yeah. the stakes there so we go we up a level there okay well he does that so how do we up the stakes more right well maybe he can save his wife mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's let's not only do that, let's put him on a ticking time clock, which yeah, really, <laughs> right now he only yeah. has a window limited time to do it. Now we have the audience on the edge of their seats because not yeah. only does he want to save the wife, but he's only got 14 minutes to do it. And the guy yeah. wakes up, it's, you know, so <laughs> like just intelligent filmmaking, brilliant mm-hmm. structure, brilliant pacing. Um, and I thought, yeah, that twist is awesome. So what do you think... I mean, what is your thoughts on that ending? Oh, on the on the ending? Yeah. Um. I I mean I did I thought it made sense. I mean yeah. it makes sense if you're if you're if you're talking about a cyclical kind of sense where it's birth and you know and then live and then die, death and reborn, it made sense. Yeah. Um, I wasn't upset about it. So I was kind of like, okay, I understand why we went there right it, well, it's, yeah. it's a complete circle right he begins yeah. the film in bed he ends the film in bed and with the guy attacking him but uh-huh. there is no set resolution so we do not know if he survives that day to get back to his wife now luckily they add a wink in there where we assume assume that he's going to that he's going to do it which is a little tongue in cheeky yeah, yeah. Um, but what I really like is that they end it where, cause in the beginning of the film, he talks about how, um, he's stuck in a rut and nothing really matters. And he goes and gets drunk, um, and he waits for his impending doom. Right. So right, he right. is a, he's a man who's hopeless. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, is, what is there for, I mean, he, he wants to, he wants his kid to know who he is. So yeah. that's a little bit of a motivation and he clearly still has a, a love for his ex. Right. Um, but other than that, those are the only two, those are the only two driving factors, but it's interesting that those are the two things that get him to the end. Right. right? They, they carry him through there, his motivation. So then by the end of it, when he wakes up, the dialogue we hear from him, the VO we hear is, it's almost hopeful. Now all I have to do, like even he, even he delivers the line and now all I have to do is just survive today. It doesn't sound negative. It doesn't sound no. like a guy who's given up. It sounds like a guy who's ready for the, for the boss level. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. To take it on. Yeah. So, it, I mean, so there's growth there almost to the point where it doesn't matter no, if, for sure. if he survives because, because yeah. he's changed as a character. Wow. So yeah. cool. Yeah. And what did you think about this? I, the whole time I was thinking that there is this interesting symbolism that it's um, like he's in a video game, but we're oh, not, yeah. they didn't, they didn't throw it in your face, but it's the same feeling. Yeah. Anybody who plays those kinds of video games knows, you know, every single thing that happens in every single level and the secret tunnel to take to take you somewhere else. And yeah, I mean, it was awesome. I loved it. I mean, it was, it was, uh, I always, I call them, um, story conveniences so Mm -hmm. he goes to a bar he gets drunk where there happens to be a sword master off in the corner i said that way early you know and what's going on there and then he has to learn to be master a sword in order to to beat a sub boss essentially guan yin um 
in order to to move on to the full boss right yeah now i i trained in iaido for 10 years that's the art of the katana the japanese oh. swordsmanship i, I have that. that's yeah, pretty awesome. I, yeah i have a i have a, a shodan rank i have a black belt in it um um i i did retire um, but so for a decade, so I, I had a sword and I, and I used it. And I can tell you, it takes more than I counted it. it he, he studied it for like, I don't want to say like 28 days. And I was like, listen, buddy, <laughs> you're not taking I mean, on a master and in like, yeah, yeah a month. Cause, yeah. You, cause, and again, like by the time he gets to her, he yeah. still only has half a day left. Exactly. That. Yeah. So it's not like he gets full days with her. You I'm know? thinking, I'm thinking, okay, so he's going to spend a thousand days with this lady. No, it's about 28 yeah. days. Yeah. <laughs> 28 if it's yeah. all it takes then i just yeah. might as well just get up and start learning i was like what did i do for wheel, nine wheel the sword. <laughs> yeah what i do for nine years and 11 months then so anyway <laughs> all right so so he does that but it was cool you know and, and so we learned those things um and he goes through it very video game like i love yeah. i love that they um uh had supers that would say you know like present game or whatever they would do to kind of remind you like this is fun i like yeah. the fact that there was little things like he had he subtly emitted em an em field that we yes. could visually see something's see. wrong with this guy because mm -hmm. he's blowing up tvs yeah the tvs you know? behind him it was the first kind of thing i noticed when he walked into the the game it was yeah the game absolutely whatever. yeah but what i really like is the visual subtext that they set up in the very first shot of the very first scene, which is a watch on the kitty cat. Oh, yeah. So it's, yeah, right. But if you look at it, the face of the kitty cat is reflected in the glass and it's going backwards. I didn't see that, Jeff, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna so, go back and watch that now. because I Yeah, need to see it. I thought that was super cool. I was like, all right, that's a great visual subtext to start uh, out a I movie. I see that? Oh, oh that's man. all right, you know, it's fine. I love that stuff. Yeah, that so, stuff. so that was in there, but that's those are little things that we wanna show. Because when you see a movie like this, you think there's, there's not gonna be any visual subtext. This is a guy who's killing guys six ways The general Sunday. audience is gonna follow just the guy. Yeah, right, <laughs> right? I'm not that uh, I'm not saying people are not right. smart, but yeah. yeah, and they really balanced comedy in this film, which yeah. I really appreciated. Uh, we talked about this off camera. There's a scene in the movie. I was eating a candy bar. During the, <laughs> listen, so I'm eating Spoilers. a candy bar. I'm like, it's, it's a Cliff Bar. I like to consider them like somewhat healthy. We both yes. know they're they're not. To you, a Cliff Bar is candy. Yeah, that's a candy bar to me. I'm okay. like, I'm eating a candy bar. All right. So I'm eating this cliff bar um, midway through the movie. And there's this there's this katana scene. Now, one of the villains is played by Will Sasso, who did um, a long stint stint in um, Mad TV. Yes. So yeah, that's he's what he's a must great, known for. He's a great physical comedian. And yeah. he's playing a bad guy in this one. And I'm like, cool. Good for you, Will Sasso. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, use those chops. And he, I'm, I know spoilers, I don't care. He gets a sword in the head, right? <laughs> and he and he spins around and he's like, I smell muffins. Do you smell muffins? And I lost, I started choking on my candy bar. I, I coughed up and spit it out while I was dying watching this because it, that's a great line in a script, but the way Will Sasso plays it. What he right? said, yeah, the way he said it, right? <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> It's great. So it was so good. A movie like that that is over the top, that is blood and violence. We're seeing people get decapitated. It's mm -hmm. wild and crazy. It has to be fantastical. And sure. to bring yeah. in a, a type of comedy like that, absolutely mm -hmm. perfect. Otherwise, it's uh it could be taken the wrong way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's again, there's there's other movies in this vein that's that are the same. They're still that same kind of just over the top. Right. But they have those little bits of that comedy that really does give that relief. Um, and it makes it work. It makes the story even a little more relatable because right. when we're uncomfortable or we're on our edge, like a lot of people laugh. They like to laugh or they need yeah, humor. It's exactly. like their coping mechanism. So the comedy works. So what do you, do you think about the theme of starting again, starting over second chances? I mean, that was clearly the theme in this Oh, movie. sure. Yeah. I mean, I think that um, in the, in today's day and age, it's a great theme because I feel like all of us kind of feel, you know, how do we, how do we start over? How do we, right. how do we reset and, uh, you know, go back to level one and try again? Right. Um, so I really appreciated that because I feel like it's really relevant today. 
I agree. Yeah. But there's yeah. always there's always regrets we all have that we think we replay even in our mind, and we think if I had gone back and done this different or that different, what would have happened? Exactly. So it really touches on that that aspect, which makes you think, you know. Right, and and, yeah. a, and a successful movie is a movie that can reach out with a type of a human truth that we all have, and right. something as simple as second chances like that. Yeah. Can, can really take a script or a film and make it a, a wider demographic, man. It can cast oh. that net, make it high concept. Yeah, um, for sure. And for they, sure. Did, they did that. And uh, considering this was supposed to be a theatrical release, um, it didn't yeah. happen, but Hulu picked it up and made it an original. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like this film came under the radar. I don't hear anybody talking about it. Well, yeah, when you said it and you mentioned it, I was like, remember seeing that on hulu and then it you know it was great it was a great yeah great movie and it probably missed i think there's probably gonna be a few of those that missed their opportunity to really have that big theater release i liked it i thought it was but good I'd i love it I, i'd watch another one which says a oh, lot because because this yeah. is very it can be hokey i'd watch another one of those i thought it was no, good I, mean, I live with a guy who like this is his this is his <laughs> The demographic for this film is him, and he was all about it. There was awesome. only one sequence that he had trouble with. Okay. But other than that, he just loved it all over. And oh, very so, good. Yeah. All right. So um, what is our next film going to be? What do you think? I don't know. I'm leaving it I'm leaving it up to you. I, okay. I chose this one. Yes. Um, outside of Frank Grillo, who really carried this film, he was great. Oh, he was super um, awesome. Mel Gibson, awesome, but not a lot of character development. Na no, yeah. Naomi Watts, fantastic. <laughs> not, again, not she's dead most of the movie, guys. Sure. So I don't know what you're going to do with that. Spoilers again, Jeffrey. Oh, my God. <laughs> don't. Why? Yeah, Why? She's, she's dead for, you know, 98% of the movie. So what are you going to do with that? Right. Um, but his son was great. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this yeah. was, he really did carry this film. And I thought he did a hell of a job. I'm like a Frank Grillo fan now. This guy's awesome. Oh, I've seen him in other stuff. Obviously, people kind of recognize him from some yeah. Marvel movies. But I've seen him in other, like, a CW series stuff. And he's, oh, he's really? awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw him in one of the Purge sequels that I watched. And I was like, you know, when you come That's into right. a movie like a Purge. Yeah. Yeah, when you come into like a purge sequel, you think, well, this is probably just a cash grab, right? Sure. And then I'm like, this guy's kind of killing it. Like, this is really yeah. good. You know, it was like the third one, I think. He was that, in two was the of them. One. He was in number two and number three. Oh, okay. And okay. Uh, yeah. so, yeah, I think he kind of like really. And so then after that, he landed uh, the crossbones and the Marvel. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But he, you know, it, he's a, a minor villain. So it's yeah. cool that he's, but you don't really get anything. But seeing him like this, running his own, being yeah. the lead um he did great oh my god so yeah. good because that, that could easily go wrong with the wrong performance and he just brings sure. that everyday kind of uh feel to it that's what was so great about it i think yeah 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 well uh okay so this podcast is brought to you by the script summit screenplay contest um where you can win a cash prize with a chance to have a contract with a hollywood talent manager so you guys need to make sure you get out there to scriptsummit.com and uh, uh learn more about it yeah 